This is the Art of Darkness podcast with Kevin Kautzman and Brad Kelly. We're a couple of very online writers interested in the dark side of what drives creative people to create against all odds. This show is about art and the people who make it, what it costs them, and what it takes to bring something unique and impactful into the world. Each episode, we excavate the life and work of an artist you might think you know. Don't worry, they're all safely dead. On every episode, we try and find out just what the hell was wrong with them and how they worked through their darkness to create something that lives on after them and continues to move culture. Find us online at artofdarkpod.com and on Twitter at artofdarkpod. Are back, Art of Darkness, artofdarkpod.com, uh, patreon.com slash art of dark pod. I always have to look at Kevin and make sure I'm getting that right. <laughs> patreon.com slash art of dark, of dark pod. pod. Support the That's, show. Please, please. Yeah. Um, we are doing a dark room episode today um, with our good friend Casey from the God Word podcast. Welcome, Casey. Um, folks, if you have not checked out the God Word podcast, you need to. This is like the uh, one of the most in-depth, interesting literature podcasts, literature-adjacent podcasts out there. Also good video. Casey, you are a heck of a video editor. Um, so congrats on that. That's awesome. And, uh, and, and the, one of the things I really like about your show is like, in the whatever part of the internet we're on, there's a lot of um, there. You're hitting like you do well at hitting some of the ancient writers. Uh, some you know you're you're kind of all over the place. Whereas I feel like there's a lot of uh, there tends to be a focus on maybe ten or fifteen different writers. Sort of in our part of the internet, you kind of go all over the place with it. That's yeah, really man. Cool. First of all, thank you both for having me. This is such an yeah. honor and privilege. I'm excited. <laughs> super fan. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, my show is sort of just a hobby. It's like the, um, it's kind of the aftermath of my academic career. I, I think I spent a lot of years teaching college students a lot of these books. And yeah. so, you know, you kind of get into the habit. Like a lot of it is like, I used to, I used to say it's kind of, I imagine it's, I never did stand up comedy, but I imagine it's like doing stand up where you kind of have to do the lecture over and over and mm-hmm. over again. And then finally, it's just like part of you so you can kind of do it without the notes and you kind of know these things so yeah you know it's funny when you the uh, i did before i knew at some point list, watching your show listening to your show i caught on that you you would had been in academia but before that i the first one i listened to i was like well this guy's clearly like a liter- literature professor like it was and not in a oh because he's boring way but just <laughs> like oh I'll he knows exactly what, yeah <laughs> he knows exactly what he's talking about and like he has read this material this is not you know a scan through wikipedia and he's throwing it back at you yeah. this guy knows what he's talking about so yeah totally recommend it totally recommend it to Thank anybody you. yeah and yeah and so like kafka awesome like let's get into it i loved the yeah. episode i also listened to the other darkroom episode oh cool yeah so, good yeah, yeah you know you know about. the whole yeah and i think there's plenty to talk about so yeah we're gonna talk about franz kafka for folks who um you know haven't listened to the by the original bio episode we did on kafka that's definitely worth a listen um way back in like episode four or five. Oh man we're yeah, gonna have to circle we... back all the, the the first 10 episodes we have to go back and we're to all those like people again yeah, yeah redo them all because now we understand what we're doing yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. um and then uh, then we did a dark room episode with our good friend hagulian which was also really cool so but mm. the thing about kafka is i think there is almost always more to say about our friend franz kafka for sure so um i guess one place i want to start and i kind of want to tie this a little bit into the show you do casey <clears throat> excuse me is um, I was watching a great series you had, uh, the what was it, 100 books to read in order to be based. Oh, yeah. A- and, and the trial showed up on there, which was interesting to me because I don't, as- I don't necessarily associate, well, you know, who knows, who, who knows what based means anymore anyway, right? Uh-huh. But <laughs> Based but- and Kafka pilled. Yeah. Based, right. uh- <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. And insect well, pilled. Yeah, you know, my favorite definition of based is it's just the, it's just the opposite of debased. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, be the yeah, that works. Be what it means. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's so fine. How is Kafka based? Is the trial based? 
how how do we how can we reconcile these two things? Right. Well, of course, I mean, it does depend on what it means. And yeah. I think the definition I settled on in my mind, it's funny. It's really a funny. It's a great meme because mm-hmm. because it goes kind of undefined. But I guess yeah. I just I tend to think of it as being, um, you know, a person has to like live by something and uh, have a foundation of some sort. And I think for most of us, it tends to actually be a narrative. I think like almost irreducibly narratives give people meaning in their life. And I think, um, so if you kind of know, in a sense, if you know what you're basing your life on, or if you know what you're based in, Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're based. And so I think like with Kafka, I I think of Kafka as being based, (laughs) but it's interesting because like, it's, it's more that it's like he, he takes the negative way, you know, he's sort of a via negativa guy where it's like, he kind of knows what isn't true and what he maybe isn't comfortable in and where he feels alienated and awkward and all of those kinds of things. And I think a lot of it is like, you know, uh, well, I mean, you guys have mentioned all of it. It's, you know, he's Jewish. It's um, he's modern. He's, you know, post like secular, like uh, there's sort of all these different, he's bureaucratic, all those kinds of things that he kind of knows there's like something off in it. You know, it's like something is off here. This isn't the way I'm not sure he ever figured out sort of what is the way. Like, I, I mean, I was re- earlier today, I was reading Borges on Kafka and Borges says, like, oh, one just, of the things just that, like you do. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, cause we were going to do this yeah. you know? for kicks, <laughs> but like, I yeah. always consult my Borges right. essays. <laughs> yeah. And, and, yeah. Go ahead. And yeah. Borges was saying that like for Kafka a lot, he's first of all, very obsessed with thinking about um, or being immersed in hierarchies. Mm-hmm. which does seem true all the time, certainly in the trial. Yeah. And also there's this like sense of kind of escaping uh, uh, like infiniteness to those hierarchies. That is like, you never kind of get to the last, you know, you never finish it. You never get to the finish line right. or find out who the guy behind the green curtain behind or, the red curtain is. Yeah. You know? Interesting. So I think he's like based in the sense that he, he uh, he's not a sucker, you know? Mm-hmm. And I like, and I say that as a person who feels like a sucker, or at least like I was raised like a sucker. Mm-hmm. Of course. I mean, yeah. you know, and we're, and we're talking about, I'm looking this up right now, 1883 to yeah. 1924. Yeah. Yeah. So any like, student. Couldn't get disor- I mean, you'd almost have to be. I, like, you know. It's so disorienting to live oh, through yeah. that period. Yeah. Yeah. And to be, and to be sensitive and like conscious <clears throat> Mm-hmm. through through that period yeah of course yeah. Yeah. yeah and he and he's such a like a europe like a euro a eurocrat he's a european man mm-hmm. do you know what i mean forget yeah, about absolutely. jewish or not, per- you know very he's, particular yeah. time i mean i, th- I yeah. do think um there's a lot to say actually of course about his jewishness and not just like abstractly but at that time and place you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. there was the whole sort of the, the 19th century was this process of like sort of um, what they call it, like liberating the Jews or whatever, sort of, you know, yeah. attempting really kind of for the first time in history on a big scale to allow them to sort of live as equal citizens. Mm-hmm. And so like yeah. that was a new model True. for civilization. Yeah. And then I think if you look at his family history, it was like his, wasn't his, you guys mentioned it, his grandpa or his, something was like a, kosher slaughterer or something like that so, yeah i think it was his grandfather was yeah so yeah. He, he's like very he's not distant from the past where you know everybody's doing the very sacred rituals and all that stuff right and now he's living like a secular person in secular prague yeah in prague. this kind of like post-belief era you know yeah. right in the middle of europe too yeah, yeah dead, totally. dead, much dead right now. in the yeah. center of all of it. Well, yeah. and his best like, friend, yeah. his best friend would become very active in the Zionist movement. And mm-hmm. I don't know the exact dates of all of that. This is the tricky thing about doing our show sometimes, especially when we go the further back we go. Like, wait, where do I stop with the historical <laughs> stuff? Right. Because, that, you know, you pick one thing up and the whole world comes with it. You got um, Bosch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> You're Man, in the 15th like century, century now. Bachelor's yeah, yeah. degree in Ren- Northern <laughs> Renaissance art to do that episode uh, to yeah. explain it for two minutes but but right. so his friend his friend max broad is this this diehard contributor to the zionist movement i think ended up living in israel and all of that so yeah you've got on the one hand you've got you're spiritually becoming disconnected from this tradition but the the what would you even call that the nationalism or whatever of it is is kind of is strengthening in a, in a certain yeah. way but it's getting ripped apart from the actual spiritual aspect of it at least in terms of kafka's family and his relationships yeah and i mean i absolutely love these like that um 
nexus of top, like ident- you know, you've got identity, nationalism, um, sort of belief, all of those things coming together or falling apart, I should yeah. say. You know, that's really sort of more what's happening. And then World War I, sort of on the horizon. Um, I mean, I have the same interest in, like you mentioned some of the ancient stuff. Like if you read um, like a lot of the first century stuff in Rome, one of my favorites is Philo of Alexandria writing about um, a riot that took place in 38 AD in Alexandria, where Alexandria was something like, you know, 20% Jewish at the Mm. time. And then like probably overwhelmingly Greek, but also there were local Egyptians. And so everybody has kind of a claim on this place and they're all negotiating and there's like special legal provisions for certain groups and everybody's trying to sort of, you know, manage it. And of course, like, The Austro-Hungarian Empire, which is where you know, sort of, um, Prague was at the time, yeah. was experimenting with the same kind of like mixing up of the old identities and kind of like boldly marching into the new. Yeah. But what that leaves is these is people kind of scratching their. This is me. This is me yeah. when I was like eighteen, going like, okay, I realize we're all cool now and nobody's like a Puritan anymore or whatever. Right. But you know what does that mean for me? Like, how am I supposed to live now? Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a great point. So, well, the one thing I take from that and is, is a couple things I take from that. One is like, uh, we think all of these problems are new, right? It's Mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, what do you, well, oh my gosh, what do you mean that, you know, we're not completely homogenous societies anymore? You know, and a lot of places of the world have been homogenous at times, but none of this stuff is really new, these contending with other identities and stuff. And then, yeah, the other thing is, it's like, um, you know, we're all white dudes of a certain generation, I think. And uh, <laughs> I don't mean to misgender anybody, but um, I'm, uh, I'm German Irish. You're German Irish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fair um, enough. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, there is a certain um, there's uh, something almost happening. I, I think maybe it's overstating it, but I I feel like maybe there is something that's happening to people. <sighs> How am I going to say this without, without getting too drowned in it poll, right? But like there is something happening that is similar to what's happening with Kafka. There's a, there's a somehow losing your traditions in a way and then also oh, like right. confronting yeah. like a rapidly, de- rapidly accelerating dynamism. I yeah. mean, like what, like what if Europe is just the deracination machine? Yeah. yeah. It's what what if does. this thing, you know, and yeah. all the colonialism and everything is just like trying to make you into Franz Kafka. Yeah. I mean, I think of it, I think like, I think of America now and it kind of breaks my heart still. Cause like, there's always a part of me that remembers 4th of July parties when I was 15 and you know, hot dogs and red, white and blue and stuff. But yeah, yeah, I guess like at a certain point I acquired kind of a critical view of things where I do kind of think of America now as empire. I mean, maybe I can be hopeful that it's like one of the good empires or something, but it's still empire. And what empire tends to do is like, um, you know, yeah, like you said, kind of assimilate. And it, and what's really interesting is like, even if you try to like retrench in, you know, a tradition, like for, for example, I was reading again, I mean, sorry to like, I feel like I'm kind of, uh, but I am recalling my episodes it. since you mentioned it. Yeah. We, I did an episode on um, Plutarch wrote about the cult of ISIS. And he was apparently he was a, um, like a priest in the cult of ISIS So this is like late first century or even early second century as Rome is, you know, like really post Caligula, secular, decadent, almost, you know, like becoming just chaos. Mm -hmm. And, um, and he was still trying to do it, right. He was still trying to be like the traditional ISIS worshiping Roman, but you can kind of feel that it's like, it's not going to work, man. Like the dam is cracking, whether you, you know, um, go to church or not, so to speak. So, yeah. So, you know, then like within a couple of hundred years, I guess the big um, sort of axial age stuff starts, you know. Yeah. Cash. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's an interesting transition, too. It's like it makes me think about. So then you mentioned the axial age. I do want to talk about that. But now what you're talking about also makes me think about this report to the Academy. So, Kevin, are you familiar with the Kafka story? Is it it's a, a report to the Academy? Are you familiar with the story, Kevin? No, I don't know this. Educate it's, me. I, I I don't know, Casey, if you had read it before we mentioned it. Not before. Before I mentioned it. Yeah. So it's this great story that that I, I love it. It gets kind of lost in the discourse about Kafka. 
Um, basically what it is, it's a, it's like a, a gorilla, um, making a report. Like he's, he's, you get the impression that he's either writing a letter or he, I always pictured him as like standing at a podium at an <laughs> yeah. event and, um, Harambe. Yeah. Dress, <laughs> but dressed because he refers to wearing trousers and things. Yeah. And he's explaining okay. to the Academy how he be, he basically attained the mind of a man. Oh, and he starts as like a gorilla. I was, you know, I was hunted down in the lowlands. Grad school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> this, is what I'm, this is what I'm saying. It's like, and he, yeah. he talks about, and okay. he explains how it all worked, okay. right? Like he, he came in at first and he's sort of like, it wasn't, um, he wasn't, th- he, he talks about how he wasn't actually art- having articulated thoughts. It was just an impulse in a direction. Right. And he just mimicked these things and mimicked these it's things. Like and a, right. A proto podcaster. Yeah. Right. Er- <laughs> <laughs> like an early podcast. But there's this great. No, so, I, wait, wait. Are you okay? All right. Yeah, you're so, going to bring this. Okay. But it relates. Yeah. I'm going to read a little bit of this. Okay. Because it's, it's amazing. Um, right. If I can find the right, if I can find the right spot. Um, tick tock, tick tock. Okay. Okay, so he's pinned in this cage, right? This is, this is early. They shoot him. He gets shot. He's recovering, and he's pinned in this cage, and it's too tall to stand up, and it's too narrow to sit down. So he's, like, pinned and cramped in this thing, and he's figuring out what he's going to do next, right? Mm. <clears throat> I had no way out, but I had to devise one. For without it, I could not live. All the time facing that locker, I should certainly have perished. Yet as far as Hagenbeck was concerned, oh, that's the guy that captured him. Um, as far as Hagenbach was concerned, the place for apes was in front of a locker. Well, then I had to stop being an ape, a fine, clear train of thought, which I must have constructed somehow with my belly, since apes think with their bellies. I fear that perhaps you do not quite understand what I mean by way out. I use the expression in its fullest and most popular sense. I deliberately do not use the word freedom. I do not mean the spacious, fe- fe- uh, excuse me, the spacious feeling of freedom on all sides. As an ape, perhaps I knew that, and I have met men who yearn for it, but for now, my part, I deserve, I desired such freedom neither then nor now. In passing, may I say that all too often men are betrayed by the word freedom. And as freedom is counted among the most sublime feelings, so the corresponding disillusionment can also be sublime. In variety th- theaters, I have often watched before my turn came on a couple of acrobats performing trapezes high in the roof. They swung themselves, they rocked to and fro, they sprang into the air, they floated into each other's arms, one hung by the hair from the, uh, one hung by the hair from the teeth of the other. And that, too, is human freedom, I thought. Self-controlled movement. What a mockery of holy mother nature. Were the apes to see such a spectacle, no theater walls could stand the shock of their laughter. Oh. Um, <laughs> so there's no this thing. No theater walls could stand the shock of their laughter. <laughs> well, yeah. see, there's this interesting thing. So the, there's, a, there's a whole thing about freedom there. But the one thing I find interesting, it's like, and he goes on, the whole thing thing it's told narratively but it's about this sort of escape process right and so like you think about i I think sometimes we find ourselves we feel like we're motivated by what we call freedom to like get away from everything but really what we're trying to do is like scurry out from under everything like just and and and, and we don't care where we end up with it we're just like get out of this pressure um and and kafka clearly i think experienced that because he never knew exactly what where to go with it. It was like, oh, I'll be a lawyer. I'll try to be like my dad. I'll, you know, I'll try to yes. have these relationships yeah. with these women. Uh, but really all I know how to do and what I care about is writing. And that doesn't seem to work. So like, what am I now? Right. And yeah, go ahead. What do you think, yeah. Kevin? Yeah. No, imagine, imagine thinking that writing would be the, the escape. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. like, well, you can't help hell? it. It kind of picks you. Man. What fresh hell. Yeah. yeah I mean, gosh, I mean, there's know, so yeah. much to Awful. say about, that piece like I just read it the other day just once yeah, and hearing it yeah. again like I mean the first thing is that as with so much of his writing there appear to be multiple ways of reading this like what is that story about um you know a baby becoming a grown-up human and having to like learn the ways of humans or is it about like a teenager having to professionalize you know or whatever, like a person having to go to the DMV to get certified to drive, you know, there's like any number of like, um, sort of hoops that you might have to jump through. But what's amazing is that Kafka is able to like construct these narratives that seem to work on all those levels. And then you have to go like, well, what, this is like real alchemy, like what's happening here that I can read this 
and feel like it's kind of about me. Like that's right. a, that's a true, like, I don't know what's going on, but that's why, like, I sometimes, I mean, I understand Kevin's joke, but I yeah. also think that sometimes writers really are like the, um, <clears throat> you know, a Holy spirit carriers mm-hmm. or like the, the modern prophets in some sense that they can do that, you know, mm-hmm. um, I don't yeah. know. It really is magical to me. That, that story in particular is affected me. Every time I've read it, I've probably read it every five years or something like that since I was like a teenager. And I think when I was a kid, what I took from it was a pretty straightforward message of like, hey, it's like a, you can do anything through sheer willpower was the message I took from it as a very immature young man. Anything you want to become, you just have to like, actually commit all the way to it and it'll happen right and now i kind of read it and it's like like he okay so the one thing towards the end i'm not going to read it but like he becomes this basically intelligent ape he's a person he can talk but he's still an ape physically and they give him a young female ape are you and, talking about the metamorphosis? No, this is a report to no. the academy. Still. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. All right. They, all right. they give they give him a young female ape and when he comes back to her at night like he looks in her eyes and it breaks like he can't emotionally handle it because what what he's done is he's pushed beyond something and he literally cannot go back anymore Mm -hmm. it's about the the rubicon being being crossed and i sort of think about that with myself was like i've been so warped by the internet and the secular age that some of the relationships that i would want to have with myself and other people and god and all that yeah I can't seem to get back to it. Would, I'd have to like Oof. cut out part of my brain to get back there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I totally like you know do. what you mean. Yeah. I totally yes. know what you mean. And it's yeah. weird to me that like, like uh, I know that you get it. Like I can, you know, yeah. you know that I get it. I know that you yeah. get it. But like, we also know that there are people who kind of like, they, they wouldn't feel that vibe. They'd be like, what do you mean? Right. You know? Right. And yeah, that, what are you talking that's about? so strange cool. to me. Who are you? It's like this is this is like my soul is involved here. How do you not understand? Yeah. Me? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And and mm. so Kafka does Kafka can work on all of those levels. And so that's this is where the thing this is why like the whole based thing kind of circling back to that a little bit. Whatever that means, I think based base just means you're at home. Right. That's all right. it means. I, I am think, based. I guess my point I am is, at I, home. I think That's it's all it means. harder to actually. It's the easy Germans to, have a word, Gemütlichkeit. What's that means? Mean? Means like you're home? feeling like you're at home. Okay. That's okay. all it is. That's all base means. Okay. okay. And that's that's great. I think my but where Kafka kind of fits into this is like recognizing that that how difficult that actually is to do. Like yes. it's not just about like. Especially in Twitter, in you know? modernity. Right. Exactly. Like, You've been like, passed through there this is tiny no home. portal. Yeah. And you can't, yeah. it's like the, it's the, like when you rent a car at the airport and you go over the spikes and you can't back up. Right. Right. Yeah. It's like my yeah. car belong, like I belong back there. Like, how do I, how do I get right, there? Right, 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 yeah. right. That's my, that, yeah, that's a very good uh, description yeah. of modernity. Yeah. yeah and by the way, before we go on from that, like what a good analogy, Brad, like you're <laughs> clearly a writer. But I want to say that like that, that I mean, obviously like that is one of the things I can't, I was reading one other thing today and I forget what the source was, but I mean, Kafka was very aware of what he was doing in terms of using metaphor and thinking about analogies and mm-hmm. like um, doing it in pretty strange ways, you know, yeah. although it's like, they're not the ways that he uses, like, for example, the stuff that he does in the metamorphosis, which is so good and interesting and famous. And, you know, uh, what's that guy's name? Sokol, who writes about his, his sort of literalizing the metaphor, or basically like saying, you know, this guy, he's not like a bug, but he becomes a bug he becomes and then you just bug. stay with that. You know? <laughs> right. It's no, great. he is. He is yeah. a bug. And yeah. it is pretty, it's bug. pretty amazing yeah. and clever, but, but, I love that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like for me, this is kind of almost the essence of, um, some something like that magical thing that I was trying to remark on a minute ago about mm-hmm. what writers can do is they can go like, this is like that. Mm-hmm. And as simple as that sounds, and it sounded like when I was, I remember being in sixth or seventh grade and you learn about similes and metaphors and it, it's kind of like, okay, who cares? Sounds you know? like a trick. I it's get like, it. oh yeah, that's like, cool. You can do that. But yeah. yeah, I mean, it was only a couple of years ago, actually, maybe when I was about 35 or so, uh, which was maybe 10 years, almost 10 years ago for me. Mm-hmm that I read the Iliad for the first time. Mm. And it, like, I remember for the first about hundred pages, I was like, this is pretty boring. I mean, it's just <laughs> like a war. 
Yeah. I don't care about, you know, whatever. Right. But then I started to notice the analogies all the way through it. And it's like, you start to appreciate mm-hmm. whoever wrote, I mean, Homer, yeah. you know, whatever. Right. And he's like, he'll be like, um, they all wrote it. Yeah. All the Greeks. Yeah. Well, whatever. But yeah. this, it's like, there'll be like this description of how Hector attacked, you know, Ach- or whoever Achilles. And it'll be like Hector, or it'll say like, as a wolf with two cubs in the shrubs hides while the bunny rabbit waits for the storm cloud to pass. And you're like, what? Yeah, you know, waiting goes, for that so, bunny rabbit to yeah, come back. So yeah. Hector mm-hmm. attacked right. Achilles and you're like, oh my God, like yeah, you never yeah. think. Yeah, this metaphor this is like that. Yeah. this huge construction. Yeah, huge construction. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, <laughs> I love, love that. that. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, I five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Metaphor, metaphor, yeah. metaphor. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I am totally with you. And I think that's what always electrified me about Kafka is he was, it's the metaphor never really ends. Mm-hmm. Like the whole story is it. And then the form of this and the structure of the story is also entangled with the metaphor, the, the, That's and then the individual characters and their experience, it, it all, it all folds in that, on itself. Right. That's what and, uh, modernity it, is though. Like we yeah. don't, we don't get to, to escape. Like a metaphor right. isn't like a lark. It's not no. fun. No, it's awful. We're like, <laughs> that's the bank. The bank, your bank account is the metaphor. It's just like <laughs> raining down yes. in your head constantly metaphor, just symbol, mm-hmm. symbol, symbol. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you just want to be like existing, but mm-hmm. there's no. Yeah, there's existence. like, there ends up not yeah. being anywhere to You're actually just, set your foot. There's nowhere to flee. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. modernity. Yeah. Oh, I, mean, I got thinking. So I got really thinking about this report to the academy for a couple of reasons. So one, again, just other reasons. One is this is I think maybe I don't know if it's the only story. It's one of a very small number of stories that Kafka writes from the first person. And I know people. I don't think I is think a lot art, about hunger artists that way or no. I don't think hunger artist oh, okay, is first person. Okay. It could be. I, it's, it's not the only, Reports of the Academy is not the only first person thing. And those things are also important to me. I, I think in Kafka ties all that intense and what, per, what perspective it is. These, are all, these things are all feeding into you know, him. I think of it as like he's, he's using it all to like make a, like a hologram float up off of the page. Right. And it all, it all works towards con- contributes towards it's so good. Hanukkah yeah. has the, the film, the castle where you I can still watch have got to see that dude, you watch up until the end. And then they're like, this is where the, <laughs> this is where the, you know, the story ends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it just stops. I remember, yeah, I'll give you another thing. I read, I read, read Kafka in high school and I remember the stuff being unfinished. And I remember somebody saying like, so, you know, like the castle was unfinished and some of the other short stories are clearly unfinished. And I remember thinking, well, that's kind of like, why am I bothering to read this? Why am I bothering to read yeah. this? And then the place where we used to hang out when I was a kid was we would drive out to this half built subdivision that they ran out of money and stopped building. And we would park in the cul-de-sac. Yeah. And then like I remember having a moment there just kind of like, oh, I get what I get why I'm reading those, you know, like, like yeah. I can't even explain it to you now, but like. Sure. Yeah, this makes Dude, perfect sense. I mean, like, this oh, yeah, just like, like piles of fucking dirt. Pardon me, yeah. dirt. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. like Kafka was a hack, right? He yeah. could not. <laughs> By the way, genius, genius. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. No, no, he was a hack. I mean, he yeah. he, he could not handle one week yeah. at a uh, Starbucks in yeah. like. Yeah, suburban Minnesota. He would lose his mind. <sighs> yeah, There's man. No, Same. Yeah, he'd lo- <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the thing. I mean, it's like I we're go all dealing with it. Like he yeah. would have to. Do you, you know, know how much red meat I have to eat and weights I have to lift just to like <laughs> stay coherent in I, this world? I love these people. I go to the Starbucks <laughs> in Maplewood, and yeah. I just go like, "This is <laughs> yeah, ten hours a day. You do this." You're, you're kidding me. Yeah, I just yeah. like, I, I lose my mind. I lose my mind. Mm-hmm. I lose my, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, is, <laughs> it is amazing. It is really an amazing thing to think about. Staggering. Him, like yeah. having, like having to continue in history. You know, I know that people right. don't really right. time travel like that quite, but yeah. Yeah. you know, so, like I was thinking um, <clears throat> about the letter to his father too, before mm-hmm. this. And like when he, I mean, 
of course it's an inter- the whole thing is very interesting and he writes about the um you know the way his dad was strong and vital and he's kind of weak and neurotic or whatever but really the theme that comes through to me is just in general, the idea of the difference between them. And like thematically, that seems to be like the distance between father and son, let's say, you know, sort of mm-hmm. archetypally. And it's so, the thing is, it's so relatable to me. Like it's, uh, it's you know, um, I mean, it's not only Dostoevskyan or Freudian or whatever, but it's also like, it's me. And, you know, it's not because I have an unhealthy thing with my dad, but like, I love my dad. He's a hero to me. But at the same time, like, he's from another generation. He wouldn't understand this. He'd be like, what are you doing putting this on? This, you're crazy. You know right. what I mean? Like, he doesn't get why I read all these books. He's right. He doesn't have the same concerns. And so, like, even mm. though I admire him, like, if, and, like, I think very much like if Kafka, like, you know, if I were to tell my dad this in the very sincere, like, emo, I get, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. Gen X, but it, a millennial yeah. sort of a way where I'm like, dad, yeah. I really love you. And I want to be like you. Oh, yeah. He yeah. just would be like, oh. that's like womanish. Like, right. right. Over it, you know what I mean? <laughs> Your yeah. dad be like, and so it's like, incredibly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. What are you doing? And, and like, Shut like, up. Yeah. What's yeah. amazing about that is that it's like Kafka has managed to write almost like, um, like my not not just my future biography but almost like my autobiography like that's Mm. what it sometimes feels like when you read Mm. Kafka you're like holy Mm. shit like how did Mm. this guy know what it felt like to be a me you know but this is this is the you know I'm not trying to uh overstate this but this is modernity this is the problem that we have is that nobody like you're you will be isolated you will be alone you will be in the spreadsheet they yeah. will finally find you mm-hmm. in that yeah. A3 corner yeah. in the spreadsheet. No matter how much soul you have, no matter how much, you know, God you love, you know, yeah. it will finally bring you into that mm-hmm. spreadsheet. And then you mm-hmm. will scream at all the people <laughs> around you and say, I don't want to be in this spreadsheet, but it won't matter because you are finally in that yeah. Sheet. No, well, the, the and, spreadsheet's and in your head. The spreadsheet gets into your head. I mean, I always say the spreadsheet is a computer virus that's made the leap to the human mind, right? It, it's, you can't get out of it. <laughs> this is why we're yeah, also I mean, like so inclined <laughs> to use computers as the analogy for our brain, mm-hmm. too. And it's like kind mm-hmm. of a, like that's terrible in a way mm-hmm. because it's so limiting, right? It's such it a modern, such a specific, such a like binary kind of a thing, electronic thing. And really, like, mm-hmm. you know, I know everybody's heard that cliche about the the technology of the generation tends to be the analogy for the mind, but yeah. you know, unless you intentionally think otherwise, um, yeah, it can yeah. feel like trapping. Yeah, I think you use it too much, and it you you it, you make it true in a way, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you imagine, and uh, this makes me want to think about Kafka like confronting AI, right? Like that was yeah. a little bit beyond his his ability to imagine at the at the time he lived, but. But yeah, Turing um, test stuff. And like, it wasn't much. It was 20 is. years yeah. later after his death. You know, people were actually starting to mm-hmm. scratch notes on paper about how, how are we going to do this? Um, and yeah, I think that would be, though, you know what? That's what's so, that's what makes him such a modern person too. Cause he would have been, he would have been both cons- worried and crushed a little bit by it, but also sort of fascinated by it. I think, I don't yeah. think he would have been able to help himself. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin, what's that? No, you know, he would have invested, if he had any brains, he would have invested in Google. He well, saw yeah. all of it coming down the pipe. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. we're, we're just, we're just living like, we're, the, the problem that we have right now is we do not have language to describe whatever is happening right now. Oh, yeah. That's 100% like my thesis. It's not communism. It's not capitalism. Yeah. We've got new there's some new stuff. I guess they call it like techno capitalism. What it, yeah, whatever I that means. That I means. mean, we're, we're talking about like power, raw yeah. power. Yeah. I was to thinking degree today, that, mm-hmm. yeah, sorry. I was thinking. I was thinking today that like, uh, well, first of all, like given what you guys were just saying, you know, they're going to turn our voices into like algorithmic AIs. Yeah. Th- like yeah. this conversation will be happening in a thousand years. Yeah. Pay yeah. me. <laughs> and, like, all I care about is pay me, bitch. Exactly. I yeah. don't give up. 
but pay me it like um pay my children there will come a time pretty soon where they're gonna like you know kind of like uh like build these ais based on your text input to the internet mm -hmm. or whatever yeah and i i almost think this is already happening somewhat where the pretty soon the computers are going to start telling you like you wouldn't say that you know like right. when, oh, <laughs> like, when like you, you personally yeah like say you, that. that's yeah. Out, that's out of character for you right right you know, right try, try oh, rephrasing no. it like this and then yeah. you know it's yeah. like, oh my god no yeah but, yeah oh, that's that's, that's, that's total scary. horror yeah. 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 yeah 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 well and then yeah i mean and that's time Excuse me, as time goes on, the more and more things you say are sort of recorded in maybe not permanently, but at least semi permanently. And so, yeah, yeah, you, you might actually, a person might actually find themselves following that advice. They're like, well, that's not what I, that's not what I would say. Like, the bird well, website says yeah, that I shouldn't say I that. I shouldn't, I should, like, not a person shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. Somebody else would say that, and that would be them. But, yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a that's a very that's a bit of a Kafka situation as well. Oh, this is I the mean, thing, and this again, is the, the Kafka was a hack. Yeah, well, yeah. this is the thing that, that the hammer that we were kind of hitting the first episode we did is like everybody wants to talk about like oh it's Orwellian things are Orwellian things are not Orwellian right now. Yeah. No, it, it doesn't even that doesn't even Orwell like, Orwell would be aspirational. Orwell would be, <laughs> would mean that we would all have health care. <laughs> well, there's some okay, sort right. of socialism. Yeah. We right. at least like we you know yeah. we look after each other right. in Orwell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, everybody's got a place to be. Orwell, and... but oh, I'm Luigi with two guns. Ah, right. bah, 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 right. Bah, bah. Yeah, right. It's not good. No, that's that's yeah, it's that's worse. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> you know, back on that thought of um, like not finishing stuff too. I wanted to to also yeah. mention like because uh, I haven't read the Blue Octavo stuff, but from mm -hmm. what you were saying, like yeah. I got to get that because oh, it's great. My yeah. own personal tendency, I first of all do write, but mm -hmm. I can't finish anything. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's it's pathological. Like, I love. I have a million started short stories poems you know uh like dialogues you know mm -hmm. projects that i'm That's gonna awesome. do and i yeah. cannot for the life of me get to a finish on it and i think like oh um, man you got you're not thing. you're not delusional enough casey yeah i, th I honestly <laughs> think i was gonna say something like that like, it, it's no like, hang out with us enough yeah. and then suddenly you'll <laughs> start just, finishing you just, stuff like, you need to don't go, worry like, have an actual manic episode and yeah. finish one of these but <laughs> yeah. I, you know i can't quite do it. i remember yeah, there's this thing funny. that melville said once somewhere in one of his earlier books i think where he says got basically it's like a prayer mm -hmm. god or lord help me keep me from ever finishing anything mm -hmm. and i do think there's like there's a certain kind of like um you know because like when you finish like then it's kind of dead right like it's over you've you, you know like i don't know maybe mm -hmm. people once reread a book they've read or something but, it, yeah, it's, but it's it's yeah, kind of over at that mm -hmm. point sexy. you know uh, so yeah, like sex. part of what I like like about my podcast, for example, or just about like reading in general is yeah. it, it is like I'm kind of constantly learning and I think I can keep this up for the next, you know, 30 years or yeah. whatever. And, yeah. I mean, if you're interested in it, if it's kind of self-propelling that way. Yeah. I well, mean, it may not yeah. always be a podcast, but like I can mm -hmm. keep learning stuff. I can keep kind of building the mental constructions and like, right. again, then, you know, I, I feel like that keeps me at least mentally kind of vital. Right. You know, and, and it feels like Kafka it, similarly, like, I don't know, like, uh, you guys have seen the movie, right? The, um, the trial, the Orson Welles one. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. You remember oh, the I little have, thing? No, I haven't. Oh, you haven't seen I, it? There's oh, it's a, quite no, good. I need to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you do have to see it. It's pretty good. Mm. In fact, it's so mm. good that I haven't read the trial because I watched it and I was like, okay, that's awesome. Like, <laughs> that's why bother. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, yeah. Uh, they, it, it includes this little set piece. Do you remember this, Brad, at the beginning? That's like, it's before the law, it's called. And mm -hmm. It's like this weird little allegory of a guy kind of waiting outside the gates of a... Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know what it would be, a castle or something. Mm -hmm. And the guard is there and he's like, you know, you, you can't enter, you know. And so he eventually he sits down on this uh, like ledge and he just like gives up and waits and waits and waits. And he turns old waiting. Mm -hmm. And then like right before he's about to die, he says to the guard, like, come over here. Tell you know, yeah. what's going And yeah. the guard comes over and the guy says, what is all this? Like, why is yeah. there a gate here? And the guard goes, this gate was for you. The whole thing was only for you. Like only you could have entered here. And and like that's it. And it's just like, what? And, yes. You know, like who would even think of this? It's such right. a it's such right. a like psychotic torture of some yeah. kind. But, yeah. 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 And that's like that's one thing I think Kafka was terrified of in a way, was like the infinite. 
Definitely. or something, right? Yeah. Like he'd seen, he, it, I always kind of felt like he had actually seen how long time is or something, right? And like, yeah. you never really recover from that exactly. Yeah. And so it, he kind of understood that it never really, and which is, you know, for a guy who died when he was 40 or whatever is, is, uh, is pretty intense. Well, I mean, you know, again, modernity, like, yeah. what are you, what are you yeah, trying yeah, to do? He's, I mean, he was, he was, he was quite early. I mean, mm. I think he lived at a very particular time. Because when did when did mm. Nietzsche died in 1900, right? Did he? I think he died oh, right dude. in When we do Nietzsche, it's good, that's going to be a banger. Yeah. That's going to be a good <laughs> one. I'm really excited. No, no but it's today. like, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just sorry. I was going to say, I was reading today, too, that in, um, I think it was 1905. So what, what year was Kafka? was born in 1883. I think that's right, yeah. So he was yeah. 22. Yeah, to, Apparently, yeah. there was a big, uh, like, art show put on by Edvard Munch in, in 1905. Mm. So okay, when yeah. Kafka was 22, like this big, hugely successful kind of influential thing. And you guys know, at least the screen, the screen painting was yeah. there and all those other, sure, of course. like, well, he does these terribly dark, uh, like, you know, death at the door sort of paintings and stuff. Yeah. Again, like very, um, I don't know if you categorize him as like impressionist or just modernist or whatever, yeah. but, you know, kind of disturbed looking, images it's not to say that kafka was there but like that's what prague was kind of those, that's the kind of thing that was happening at that like turn of the century yeah. period you know and it's yeah. like mm. yeah people were on edge i mean they, yeah. you know maybe not totally unlike now i hate you i mean them. like yeah. try and imagine like your your kafka you see the like europe is gonna destroy yeah. itself right. everything is over like you've yeah. seen you've yeah. seen the american civil war uh, they're all yeah. machine gunning each other, and you know, and yeah. you're like, and oh god, oh yeah. no, we're gonna no in the Civil War, and then yeah. uh, we're gonna bring this back to you know to Europe, yeah. and then the, you know, uh, 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 what do you what do you t- yeah, <laughs> just just uh, just uh, yeah. what, what do you call them trenches? Yeah, oh trenches. god, yeah. it's awful, awful, yeah. awful, yeah. and yeah. you're just like your 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 brain is just completely discombobulated yeah. yeah like you're just going we're we're all going to kill each other like over this terrain have mm-hmm. uh well do you have you have you heard the story about Jung, jung's vision <gasps> yeah tell me about yeah. jung i jung wish i could know more details but, but you had jung a again. <laughs> yeah. carl jung had a uh he must have had a vision of world war it must have been world war ii <laughs> that he had a vision of i think Um, but yeah, he had like basically a dream that was, uh, sort of an abstraction of world war II, And he was basically convinced that Europe Mm. was going to, you know, bomb itself into oblivion. Um, and you know, and so that's suggestive that like this stuff, I don't even think you'd have to get that spooky ooky about it to think that like these things in the future do sort of reverberate back to us somehow. Right. Oh, yeah. Cause it's humans carrying these things out. I think Dude, when there I is mean, some, it, it's, it's been like that, that was like a 500 year civil war that yeah. finally came to an end in Europe with world war one, world war yeah. two. Yeah. It's, there was no well, world war. It was just the European civil right. war. Right. And the historians yeah. need to like get this right. It was like the because dust like, settling on Cro-Magnon meeting Neanderthal. Jesus man. God. Like, seriously. Dude. I mean, yes. it was like <laughs> serious hell. How world war one is when it happened. I don't give a, yeah. I don't, I do not care about yeah. world war two. World war one is where it happened. All the best people went to the front to die yeah. in this horrific yeah. maelstrom. And like nobody has any language to describe what remains, and so we live in a post-apocalyptic yeah, world. That's well said. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah I, and I think nobody uh, will will talk about it because yeah. it's too painful. But we are, especially the Europeans, everybody who like jettisoned off like the boat of Europe mm-hmm. got lucky because that was a bitch yeah. <laughs> yeah whatever yeah, happened right. there was no bueno okay you're i'm right. out i'm you're out right. i'm right. out yeah. i'm out yeah i like the idea of like all of us being kind of born after disaster you know after mm. the apocalypse in a sense like yeah. walking you know kind of zombie people and or like culturally at least but um yeah. i was going to add to that you know the other thing is like for kafka particularly i mean there were like pogroms in russia 
in the 1880s. There was the Dreyfus affair in France in 1894. Like, okay. and, and again, like the Jews had just been sort of, you know, liberated or whatever in most of these countries in Europe. So it's like, I think for him, these are very like recent events. It's not even totally clear that this kind of social experiment is going to work where you can have, you know, um, you know, Jews and Christians living alongside each other. Yeah. You know, I mean, so like he, I mean, there's a, what's that? There's like a sense of like anxiety just about that because it had never really been tried before. You know, uh, I mean, I think you guys mentioned that something like 4% of um, Prague might've been Jewish at the time. Yeah. For, I think it was, yeah, it was something like that. It was a very small minority. Seems small, but at the same time, like that's reasonably big for Jews as a diaspora in a city. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if maybe New York city might be 10% or something like that. But the point is there's, you know, numbers enough that he's going to be like, I think, um, I think Broad was Jewish. Like he, he probably was, yeah. grew up and you said like he did. I don't know if he, I don't know if he studied Talmud stuff. Do you know that or not? I don't think he did. Um, he, he later on would get kind of interested in, in, in his, his, cause his parents weren't, um, yeah, his parents weren't really that. committed and I'm sure he had like a bar mitzvah or whatever, but um, yeah. yeah, he wasn't really studying in any formal way. Yeah. So, so that was another thing was like his late rediscovery of some of this, some of this stuff. That's like, exactly what I was yeah. going to say is it's, it feels very similar to my experience where like when I was growing up, like, uh, I mean, all I did was watch Chicago Bulls games and like, just, you know, kind of whatever. But at a certain point, I think I discovered like an old stack of books that my dad had retained from mm-hmm. college or something. And I, and, or, you know, you just hear the names of like, I don't know whether it's Albert Camus or, you know, um, Homer or Dante or something. And they're always there, even though I'm not reading these, you know, they're just Mm -hmm. like, and I think in the same way he would have had, there would have been like kind of his, he he would have known that like grandpa was a holier man or grandpa at least was closer to these stories. Whereas now, like, I guess we're giving, we're just like letting them go. No one's going to read these books anymore. Like, you know, well, well, it's like, will that matter? Right. <laughs> like th- th- these things were basically like the code for our civilization yeah. for 2000 years. Maybe that's going to be okay. But like, what if it, ca- like, what if it causes world war one, you know? Right. <laughs> right. Well, well, it seems like it matters to me. And I mean, you know, to take a step, I mean, this is one reason I, I like talking to you and I, I love your show. And I think there is something that the, our show and your show are doing, even though we kind of have uh, sort of different, uh, Sticks, or we'll call ours a shtick. I won't say what you do is a shtick, but yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but like there is this like the, the I I have gotten a sense lately, in like the latter nine months or so, that like what we're doing is somehow post academic in mm-hmm. a way. Oh yeah, it's it's like this like a, a, the academy. I want to say failed us, but sort of did, and then but we didn't. We don't want to lose all of this stuff. And so, like, maybe we can, Kevin and I can have, like, one little corner of the world where, like, you know, books and stuff still matter. <laughs> uh, I, d- I just want to talk about artists, man. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I got Arto the Momo. Yeah. Arto yeah. But the that's, Momo. I mean, but that's part of how you do it because you can't disentangle uh, the individuals from the work, right? It's all, totally. yeah, you know. Yeah. You pull, well, like I know I you guys, you, like, yeah. I can tell that you guys, like me, sort of, uh, I mean, I know, Kevin, I know you go to church and stuff. I don't mean to really make a joke of this, but like yeah. kind of also literature is your religion too. Like it, it yeah. just, you know, it really does get that close to a person's guts or heart or something mm-hmm. at some mm-hmm. point. Yeah. Like I was thinking, theater. I know you guys, theater, theater, yeah, theater, than, theater person yeah, thing. yeah, no, yeah. but I, you know, yeah. It's yeah, all yeah, kind yeah. of in the same, mm-hmm. yeah. I think all... of it as being in the same sort of dimension. Cause like I was going to mm-hmm. say, I um spent, my wife got her MFA while I was doing my, you know doctoral stuff yeah. and so i had a lot of time to hang out with mfa students and like i don't know if this was true of all of them but some of them clearly were like you know uh this is what i'm living for from now on right. <laughs> you know right. and it's a kind of crazy choice like you're not going to make money mo- i mean you know very few are yeah. going to make money on it but it's like you know you kind of realize that these ideas seem to be important enough that like somebody has to care you know i mean this is what like monasteries were <laughs> like right. you know we're like yeah. we're gonna we're not gonna let uh, like civilization forget about the Aeneid or, you mm-hmm. know, Homer or whatever. And I mean, that's mm-hmm. like, that's actually what Christians did for a thousand years. And we're going to translate yeah. it and make sure that this, yeah. Yeah. That's exactly. intense, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I don't know. 
I don't know yeah. what's going on right now. So I yeah, is this, yeah, no, we're, I think we we're could in see serious trouble. Well, one of the one things corner. I tell people though is that, like I do. I think if you really want to succeed at that, like you should, you know, buy hard covers and then like bury them in a dry <laughs> cave nearby <laughs> because it may. Be, you never know when the internet yeah. is just going to be wiped. You right, know? right, right. Yeah, yeah. don't filthy. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's not time to turn in turn in your books. Yeah, oh, I know. I've, dra- I've got books uh, I've dragged. Through five my in my five latest states, banger you know? uh, tweet is just Blood Meridian, and it's the one. It's like a like <laughs> a child. Child's, yeah, like the child version somebody sent on. You <laughs> oh, know, I saw. Yeah, the, the telegram. Cartoon, yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, uh, I guess <laughs> that's who I am. Right. That's yeah. who I. Am. That makes sense. I, you <laughs> know, I'm from the West. I, you know, I don't, I mean, you know, one of my, one of my best friends in uh, New York city was this uh, Jewish guy who is, is, you know, from the, the bar. And he's like, Oh, you're from the West. I'm like, well, I'm from North Dakota. He's like, you're from the West. <laughs> is that the, is that the West? Is that where the West starts? Is that where the West begins? That's, that's what our sign says. <laughs> I guess you could draw a line. I anywhere. guess I think I'm. Oh my! I am from the West. Yeah. So yeah. no, and I'm. I am that little yeah. cowboy dude. Right. So, right. Right. Oh funny. man. Yeah. You know. You know. I was thinking too about Kev. I love your sense of humor. It always makes me laugh. Oh, was, good. But like related to Kafka, it's an interesting thing for me. Like whether Kafka's funny or not, I I mm. can kind of see mm. it either way. Mm. But um. Sometimes I think that Kafka like was uh, taking things seriously that we might tend to like do that defensive laughter at, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like where um, it's actually a little too serious to take in right now. So I'm just going to make a joke and not have to deal with it. Like, for example, I was thinking about like uh, I'm one of the thoughts that that comes to me in thinking about like the metamorphosis in particular, you guys nailed it too, is that like so much of the beginning of that story is, is bizarre because it, goes right from, you know, he woke up a bug to concerns about work and paying the rent. And it's like, I'm that, sorry. That's, it's like, what? Like, yeah. I, that's you know, hilarious. It's so yeah. weird, right? It is. It's, it's, it's hilarious. Yeah. You're right. It's uncomfortable. Like, and it I think, is. Like, that, I think for Coffee, yeah. he's trying to make like a serious point that this, um, you know, kind of like professionalism and modernity or like just sort of like hyper urban life at mm. the time, mm. it's not right. And like, mm, seriously, no, course, it's a course, problem. It's horrific. Yeah, and so like, yeah. we can make the jokes, uh, uh, like, right. like, you know, watch office space or whatever it is that kind of hits closest to home. And I yeah, love the sure, jokes, sure. but the yeah. jokes generally like accept it ultimately as right. like, it's like death and taxes and you have to mm. wear a tie and show up on right. Saturday right, sometimes. Right, right. But it's right. like, I think Kafka might've been like, let's actually talk about that son. Right. You know? No, 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 no. He was, he was making a joke. Yeah, he was being, so, like, so you, like, you think it was gallows humor on the existential, you know, hanging and the gallows. There's like, the, like there's, the, yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, I, I can kind of see it both ways. I mean, I definitely think the stuff is funny, but like, it's never funny. It's never just funny for sure. Like, it is. I, I think I may have referred to the metamorphosis, like the opening scene is something like a far side cartoon. Cause to mm-hmm. me, it kind of is, but like, but that's just the one image. And then as it plays out, it's, it's still it's, got its moments it's, of humor, but yeah, like, it's like, no. it becomes kind of horror homo. I, it's I so, it's yeah. horrifying. Yeah. The whole yeah, time. Yeah. 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 The original image, you know, it's this big corpulent bug. It's kind of funny, but like, <laughs> yeah, actually, no, that's like a, <laughs> yeah. it's like, if you, you know, if you had a rough day, you, you're on a road trip and nothing's gone right. Your car breaks down. You might go, <laughs> and then nobody, you get out you're like, oh, nobody, the, the that's, that's exactly with yeah that's exactly what it <laughs> yeah, is yeah, yeah. We, nobody we wants modernity embarrassing and sad. Yeah. nobody wants it nobody wants yeah, it you true. you you could ask even the manager that's the that's the <laughs> even, horror of oh, modernity. Right. Even, even sam's oh, boss doesn't want oh it. yeah even yeah. even uh jeff bezos doesn't <laughs> even want like this like if you said like it's gonna look like this yeah. he would be like ah. Oh, uh, right, I don't. Right. I don't want this. Is there some other way to? But now Is we can't. Now we're at this way, point where we can't even just be imagine. Like, oh way. no, we're just gonna make this thing at scale. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you're the. Bug. And again, this is. By the way, this Horrific. is the thing that like. This is the river that divides me from my father. Is like if I mm. try to talk to my dad about these, like that concern, 
mm-hmm. he, he doesn't get it. He's like, he's still yeah. starching his collars. He, he's retired. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, right. he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, dad, like, just wear some, you know, Bermuda shorts and like, he give won. up. Yeah. But dad not won. my dad, he shaves every day and right. he's mm-hmm. on time and, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you get, that's the thing you get, you get, um, you get routinized and then like, right there's a great and we we can kind of wind down the kafka we do want to do after dark because we're going to talk about after dark. contemporary we're... literature here in a second but like okay. that thing i take there's a phrase from the first season of true detective that i think about all the time oh, where at Christ. one point he goes be careful what you get good at and it, like that's the thing like because i see that in my dad retired guy too just went to work every day and now like it's over and he was like well I, now now what do i do Right. Like I thought retirement would be awesome, but like, it, I mean, it's not that he isn't, he's happier than I've ever seen him, but there is, you can tell there is like a, it stopped and now the yeah. machine God keeps damn. going somehow. He, I'm he's glad, happy, I'm like, glad if my dad's what you've dead. seen, it wouldn't be the same. You know? It's like, it is yeah. like we're in some kind of a, like spiritual war to quote oh, Blake Crab, I guess. Right. It does feel a little bit like that at times. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Woo! <laughs> Five minutes. Yeah, we'll come back. Again, guys. We'll okay, come yeah. back. No, okay, so um, coming back. yeah, we're coming back to the for the for the after dark. Casey, this was awesome. I think you know we're gonna have to have some more conversations because this this yeah, is fantastic. All um, right. Um, where can people find you? Oh yeah, just uh, I think if you Google, I think if you Google Godward podcast now, and you have to yeah. put podcast because there's that painter. Yeah. But uh, oh, okay, Godward podcast that'll bring you to the page. Tell me what is the what is the origin of that name? Well, I, I don't even know anymore. I think yeah. probably I, it may have been just that like, I like, I am, I'm a, I'm a lapsed Methodist, which means mm-hmm. like, I really am far from where Kevin is, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, throw it's, the it's, water at The me one right holy now. Roman but Catholic at the same time, apostolic like, church. Yeah, I'm very, just, um, ah, like, yeah. I'm very interested in it. Like, I think yeah. there's something there and I've had one or two, um, <laughs> what are you supposed to call them? Like anomalous psychological experiences to put ah, it in, like you know, okay. in, yeah. in modernist terms yeah, uh, yeah, that yeah. Like, convinced me that, yeah, there's something out there. So fair enough. Okay. I dig it. Yeah. People check, check the, his show out, man. It is, it is smart. It is entertaining. You're going to learn a lot about books that you've either read or you, you should be reading. Um, <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah, no, this is, this has been awesome, man. Thanks so much for being with us. Uh, and folks who are listening to this, uh, support us on Patreon. I'm sure you, you've got a Patreon as well. Um, yeah, people will find it if they, it, if they Google around for you. So, um, yeah, this has been, this has been awesome. Thanks so much. Thanks guys. Patreon.com slash art of dark pod. <laughs> Scene five. Yep. Come right back. Okay. Yep.